and welcome to this live stream service. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning here at Van Life AUG.
Our sermon speaker this morning is none other than our senior pastor, Pastor Setareki Merkula. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to each and everyone that are tuning into this platform uh, this morning, Sunday the 30th of May 2021. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome and a special welcome to the members of the Abandoned Life AOG Church here in Nakurakura Nani. Um, I'd like to welcome other pastors, uh, Reverend uh, Pastor Sosile Nwadele, uh, Pastor Urera Sake, uh, uh, Pastor Alvaredi uh, from Noe Domba, uh, Talangasi, uh, not forgetting uh, Pastor Inoke and also uh, Pastor Magana. Uh, thank you for your prayers and for your support during the length of I would also like uh, to extend a warm welcome to, uh, to the Board of Deacons, the members of uh, the four districts, uh, members of the Men's Fellowship. WM, the youths, the Sunday school members, and uh, those that usually love to join us on Sunday services, I'd like to welcome you to, uh, to this uh, uh, live broadcast. I'd like to also welcome our cell leaders, uh, 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 the prayer warriors that usually pray for us. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would also like to welcome the members of, of the church that, that may have been stranded in the areas uh, that have uh, been held up due to the uh, 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 COVID-19 uh, 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 protocols. I would also like to welcome the members of the church that are part of uh, the essential workers, frontline workers. Uh, members of the church that are here locally and, on, and also abroad and also members that will watch this clip later in the day or in a later time. I welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would also like to welcome the members of the Assemblies of God in our nation, the National Executive, the General Superintendent, uh, Reverend Dr. Moses Nakao, the Deputy General Superintendent, uh, uh, Reverend Peter Singh, our Divisional Presbyter West, uh, Reverend Philip Jessa, and our District Presbyter, uh, Reverend A.P. Ingairi. Uh, welcome each and every one of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would also like to, uh, to welcome uh, uh, the body of Christ uh, in our nation uh, uh, this morning. I would also like to extend a very warm welcome of uh, the Ministry of Health, uh, police uh, officials, uh, the military officials, uh, uh, not forgetting our Facebook friends. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you are, uh, correctional centers, hospitals, we welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all the dynamic speeches all the dynamic speakers that spoke during uh, uh, last week, uh, the Pentecost week. And uh, as I speak now, some have been televised simultaneously with this live platform. I hope that you have enjoyed, or I am enjoying at the moment, listening to these great speakers. It is also hope that you have received your portion from their sermons, from their teaching, and have done something about it to your life, but also in your life. This morning, I wish to uh, 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 continue from that theme, the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives as a believer. We, as a believer, cannot live a successful life, an enjoyable life, a victorious life 
a meaningful life, a meaningful life of relationship with Christ without the Holy Spirit. That is impossible. We as believers need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, trying to live a uh, Christ-like life is very stressful. It's very laborious, very mechanical, boring. Without the Holy Spirit, attending church services or going to church services is a burden. Without the Holy Spirit, doing God's work is a burden. And to some extent, doing God's work is meaningless to us. Someone said that a church without the Holy Spirit is just another political party. It is my prayer that after listening to my sharing this morning, you and I, as a believer in Christ, we realize that we need the Holy Spirit in our spiritual walk, in our relationship with Jesus, in our relationship with Jesus. Now, before I read our scriptures this morning, may I invite you, if you could bow down with a word of prayer with me this morning. Father, we are so thankful for this wonderful morning. Your word says that every morning your, your love is renewed. And we thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you, God, for blessing our country. Thank you, God, for, for the lives that have been saved through your matchless name. This morning, God, as you're about to share what I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will speak perspectives in our lives. I pray, God, that you'll speak to us this morning. I pray, God, that you'll bless our hearts. Bless those who will be listening to this platform today. I pray, God, that your word will never return void and will do as it is expected to do in our lives. This is our prayer this morning. We pray in no other name, but in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Just dwelling on the theme of the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives as a believer, I'd like to have a scripture reading from John chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. John chapter 16, verse 5 to 11. I will also be quoting scriptures from John chapter 15 verse 18 right down to John chapter 16 verse 16 our Bible reading this morning is taken from John chapter 16 verse 5 to verse 11 I will read from the NIV translation the Bible says but now I am going away to the one who sent me and not one of you is asking where am I going? Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. Verse 7, but in fact, it is best for you if you have a pen with you. I would request if you if you underline that. But in fact, it is best for you. Some translations say, but the truth that it is to your advantage. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Verse 8 tells us what will the advocate, what will the Holy Spirit do when he comes to us. The Bible says, and when he comes, he will do three things. He will do three things. One, He will convict the world of its sin. I want us to note the joining words. Convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. When the Holy Spirit comes to us, He will do these 
three things. One, convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. Verse 9, the world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because it's available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Verse 11, judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. The ends of Bible reading this morning. And may God bless the reading of his word. Now, this word, um, these verses, they capture part of the conversation that has been taking place between Jesus and his disciples. It has been happening and for uh, uh, quite some time and it's been recorded in the Gospel of John from a few from a few chapters prior to this chapter. But I will however take reference from chapter 15 verse 18 to chapter 16 verse 16. Verse 5 captures a scene where Jesus is telling his disciples about his departure. And surprisingly, nobody bothers to ask Jesus as to where he was going. Jesus said that in verse 5. He said that He said that I'm when 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 I'm telling you about my departure, I can see that that um, that no one is asking. Where am I going? But instead of asking that question, they were so grieved about what Jesus told them. I like what is mentioned in verse 5. Verse 5 begins with the word but. The word but implies uh, the word but implies that he is leaving. Is leaving and going back to the Father who sent him leads to something different in comparison to when he was with his disciples. There are two different situations Jesus with his disciples, and now Jesus is about to leave them and going back to whom? To the Father who sent him. And the second situation is what they are about to. Uh, encounter when Jesus is about to live there and that situation is so concerned the disciples are so concerned about that situation that caused them to grieve about his departure the disciple was so distressed about the news that Jesus just told them before telling him about his departure Jesus told them a few things before he told them about his departure. And what he told them before telling them about his departure really, con really uh, uh, caused them to grieve. It was so distressing that they did not even bother to ask Jesus about his destiny. This implies that what Jesus told them was quite challenging. Jesus told them a few things before, just before telling them that he is about to go back to his father. And the thing that Jesus told his disciples was quite challenging to the disciples. It was quite difficult for them to swallow. Some of the things that Jesus told them were these. It's captured in John chapter 15 verse 18. He told them, expect the world to hate you. The world will hate you. John chapter 15 verse 20. He said you will be persecuted because of me. Verse uh, chapter 16 verse 2. He said you will be put out of synagogues. Expect that. Expect that they will, they will try to put you out of synagogues. Verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 3, they said that they would like to kill you because of me. And Jesus said that the 
uh, from them, the world killing you, they will see that as an as an as them offering a sacrifice to God. Now these things cause the disciples to grieve. Cause them to be distressed. They were they grieved. It was hard for them to swallow the situations. Were these scary things ever happened to the disciples when Jesus was with them? I guess so. How do I know? The Bible says, the Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 4, it said, I have told you this so that when it, so that when their time comes, you'll remember that I have warned you about them. Jesus said, I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. I assume that all these challenges, being hated by the world, being persecuted, being put out of the synagogues, uh, uh, being trying to kill Jesus, I assume that all these challenges during the time Jesus was there was probably grossly encountered by Jesus alone. The disciples could have seen it. The disciples could have heard about it. The disciples could have talked about it, but have never experienced or felt what it's like to be hated because of the gospel. What is it like to be persecuted because of Jesus? What is it? How does it feel to be put out of synagogues because of the gospel? How does it feel like to be crucified because of the gospel, because of Jesus? And Jesus is telling them, He's telling them that now that he's returning to his father who sent him, the disciples will not have a taste of those situations. But now, without Jesus, Jesus is telling them, expect that when I leave, expect that you will be persecuted because of me. The world will hate you. You will be put out of synagogues. Some would love to kill you because of me. No wonder the disciples were so grieved about this, about this news. And in addition to that, Jesus was telling them that I'm going to leave and you will be uh, and uh, we will be separated. Jesus advised them, he said, John chapter 16 verse 1 is that all this I have told you so that you will not fall away so that you will not go extreme Jesus was advising them expect this to happen so I'm telling you now so that you do not fall away when these things come to you when you encounter these situations in John chapter 16 verse 4 Jesus said, I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I have warned you about them. Jesus was advising them. Jesus was advising them about that. Number two, number two, uh, why most of those situations were grossly encountered by Jesus. He said in John chapter 15, verse 20, remember? What I told you, a servant is not greater than the master. If they persecuted me, they will all they will persecute you also. If they obey my teachings, they will obey yours also. Jesus said that a servant is not greater than the master. The context of that, of that sentence is irrespective of the challenges that we will face, irrespective of how much we will we have to go through, how painful it is, we remind that our Master Jesus Christ suffered more than what we have encountered or what we will encounter. For 
his name, for his name. Jesus said, remember that a servant, that a servant is not greater than the master. We encounter challenging things in following Jesus. Be reminded that whatever the situation is, Jesus suffered more than what we are suffering now. Being puzzled, confused, depressed, grieved by the situation that they are anticipating to encounter. And now they are going to encounter the same situation, but now without Jesus. They used to have Jesus with them, but now Jesus is advising them. I am about to return to the Father who sent me. And you are going to send the you're going to face the same situation. I'm advising you now so that when it happens to you, you, you will remember that I have advised you. With that situation, being grieved, puzzled, and being depressed about what Jesus told them, Jesus said in verse 7 of John chapter 16, he said, but verily, but very truly, I tell you. But very truly, I tell you. If I were to prove, if I were to uh, 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 paraphrase that sentence, the sentence would be like, but let me tell you the truth. Not a truth. Jesus, if I would paraphrase that, Jesus would have told his disciples. But let me tell you the truth and this is the truth Jesus told the disciples it is for your good some translation says it is to your advantage some translation says it is best for you the King James Version used the word expedient it is to your expedient the word expedient means it may feel improper that I leave but it is for your convenience that I go he said it is for your good that I am going away Jesus Jesus told them even though the situation would be very challenging and when you encounter the situation I won't be with you he said it is for your that I go. Jesus said, it is to your advantage. It is for your good. It is to your advantage that I go. Now, how is that possible? How is that possible? Why is Jesus saying to them that it is for their good that he leads? knowing very well that, that the disciples will encounter the same thing that Jesus was facing. But now Jesus is without them. Jesus is not with them. Jesus said, this is the truth. Go of Savor Laco, do not want to be candid and go and get to the two over two. Over two, we became to end to a nineteen. Go nineteen, I will tell you, to every night of it. It is for your good that I go. Jesus knows very well, Jesus foresees what they will encounter what they are going to face, what will come their way. Disciples on their own, Jesus is not there. And Jesus foresees what they are going to do, what they are going to face in the near future. Despite of that, Jesus told them, it is for your good that I live. And 
ni usa red de radio, ni usa clato, ni vica, no nos soltaba. A usar clato, ni vica, ni re, ni nos soltaba. A usar clato, ni nos lleva que hemos de murmurar. You will be persecuted. A usar la vida, vamos a matar que muy. A usar clato, vamos a partir, still said, a vida, no se ve que muy. Now, why was that emphasis? Jesus said, "This, let me tell you this truth." What do you mean? Come to nineteen of you. If we not have it, come to. How is that possible? How is that possible? Jesus tells the reason. Why is it to the advantage his departure? He said, if I do not go, and he uses these words to describe the Holy Spirit. He said, if I do not go, the advocate will not come. The King James Version says, if I do not go, the comforter will not come. The New American uh, 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 Standard Bible says, If I do not go, the helper will not come. The Bible that I have here with me is the Fire Bible. The Fire Bible says, If I do not go, the counselor will not come. But if I go, I will send the comforter If I go, I will send the helper to you. If I go, I will send the counselor to you. Now Jesus sees the importance of the Holy Spirit in our life as a believer. He emphasizes the importance of the Holy Spirit in our lives as a believer. You and I need the Holy Spirit. It is so important that Jesus told the disciples, "It is for your good that I go, so that I can send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper, the Counselor, the Advocate to you." My fellow brothers and sisters, Jesus was emphasizing the importance of the Holy Spirit in the work of the Lord. In the work for the Lord, and in our walk with the Lord, Hallelujah! I thank Jesus for the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them the three things that the Holy Spirit will come and do. He said in verse eight, John sixteen eight, he said, "When the Holy Spirit comes, He will one." Convict the world regarding sin, and righteousness, and judgment. I want you to take note that the three, that the three things happen. They should all take place when the Holy Spirit comes upon a life. These three things are inseparable. Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world regarding sin and righteousness and judgment. These three things will will happen to a life when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Holy Spirit will convict the world regarding the sin, convict the world with righteousness. And convict the world in judgment. In verse nine, ten, and eleven, Jesus explains what is meant by convicting the world regarding sin. And verse eleven, uh, verse ten, uh, Jesus explains uh, regarding righteousness. And verse eleven, regarding judgment. He said in verse nine, regarding sin. Because they do not believe in me, 
verse 10, and regarding righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer go to see me. And verse 11, and in regarding judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Now, verse 8 convicts the world regarding sin. Regarding sin because they do not believe in Jesus. And convict the world of righteousness, verse 10 says, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer are going to see me. And convicting the world with judgment, verse 11 says, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Let me talk about these three things and then we close up. Convicting the world regarding sin because they do not believe me. Now the Holy Spirit will empower you as a believer to expose sin. Holy Spirit exposes sin. Now Jesus said that now though now, now Jesus said that in verse in John chapter 15 verse 18 he said though are you though you are in the world you are not of the world you do not belong in the world now because you are out of the world though you though you are in the world but you are not of the world and because you are not of the world you do not belong to the world Jesus said, the world will hate you. The world will love to persecute you. In addition, when you are out of the world, when you are not of the world, when you do not belong to the world, you see sin better. When you were in the world, when you belong to the world, you do not you do not see sin well but now that Jesus have have taken you have have redeemed you from the world and now that you don't belong to the world even though you are in the world but you are not of the world you see sin better now and with God's empowerment through the Holy Spirit you can tell the world, that sin is sin and your way out of that bondage is Jesus your solution is Jesus it's only Jesus that can take you out of sin now Jesus said that if you do not believe in Jesus not believing in Jesus is sin now that is not an easy job to do. Jesus has warned us. Jesus foretold us. Jesus tells the disciples, in doing so, the world will hate you for that. The world will try and persecute you for that. When you try to expose, when you, when you expose sin, when you expose sin when you point out that that is sin Jesus said the world will hate you for that the world would love to persecute for that to some extent they would love to kill you for that expect to be put out of synagogues when you point sin when you expose sin in the power of the Holy Spirit now those situations are very challenging to encounter to be hated by the world to be persecuted to be put out of synagogue because you have rightfully uh, convicted the world of their sin uh, people trying to kill you we have watched um, uh, news where Christians have been killed because of their belief in Christ. Now those situations are not easy situations. They are very challenging situations. Now how can we
go through those turbulence? How can we uh, how can we encounter them? Jesus said, that is why I am telling you, it is for your good that I live. Because when I go, I will send the comforter. The comforter will comfort you in these kind of situations. Praise the Lord. He said, the helper, I will send the helper. If I do not go, the helper will not come. So I need to go, I have to go, so that I can send the helper to help you in these challenging situations. You and I as a believer, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Comforter. We need the Helper. In whatever situations we encounter, in proclaiming the good news, when God uses us to convict the world of sin, expect the world it is for your good that I go so that when I so that when I go I will send a comforter who will comfort you in these trying times I will send you the helper the helper will see you through praise the Lord I thank God for the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will use you use me use the body of Christ, we will use the believers to convict the world regarding sin. And whatever circumstances you encounter in the process, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper, will see you through. Number two, Jesus said that not only the Holy Spirit will, will convict the world regarding sin, but it is but it will also tell the world, the unsaved, the lost, the convicted, that believing in Jesus as the Son of God, believing in Jesus that He lived and died and resurrected, believing that Jesus is the only sacrifice provided by God, is the only way provided by God to man to be justified. My God. To convict the lost with that gospel, you and I need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will empower us to tell the world once they are convicted with sin, the Holy Spirit will empower us to point to Jesus and tell the world that Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus said that if I go, I will send the Holy Spirit. And the NIV translations use the word advocate. Jesus said, if I go, I will send the advocate. To advocate is to publicly support or to publicly recommend a particular cause or a particular policy. Now, to publicly tell the world that Jesus is the only answer, that Jesus is the only way to be saved, that is not easy. To declare publicly to tell the world about this truth to 
publicly recommend this truth that Jesus is the only way to be right with God. It is not easy. Jesus have foretold the disciples by doing so, expect the world to hate you. Expect the world to persecute you for what you are trying to advocate, to publicly declare, to publicly recommend. When you publicly recommend that Jesus is the only way to God, Jesus is the only way that Jesus is the only solution. Jesus is the only one that can save you. Expect to be hated by the world. Now, Makatiko, you gonna you gonna walk to such in your chisu ni wali don don ani na na Makatiko. Sor na di ko mani tu tu. Rapa kompo tu rapa kompo lai. Na Makatiko sor na sintalita. Na Makatiko na na sintalita kaya na buko ni ka you walk to such you go that you have publicly recommend. Expect the public will try to persecute you. Expect situations where, where, where you will be put out of synagogues. You will be not allowed to enter a, a certain church. You will not be allowed to enter a certain community. Because of your conviction of advocating uh, uh, where you have publicly declared that Jesus is the only solution, Jesus is the only way to God. Expect to be hated. Expect persecution. Expect that you will be put out of synagogues. Expect to the extreme that they would try to kill you. Jesus said that you will Jesus has advised them that you will encounter this and for you to um, uh, to go through this the Holy Spirit you need the Holy Spirit that is what Jesus was telling them it is for your good and it will not be killed of your love but at the same time, the Holy Spirit will be able to save you. The Holy Spirit will be able to save you. The Holy Spirit will be able to save you. The Holy Spirit will be able to save you. The Holy Spirit will be able to save you. The Holy Spirit will be able to save you. And it will not be able to save you. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go because if I go, I will send a comforter, I will send a helper, I will send the advocate who will give you the boldness to tell the world that Jesus is a solution, that Jesus is the only sacrifice provided by God for man to be justified by grace. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, going through these challenging circumstances, these unfavorable situations, these trying situations, He said, that is why I'm telling you it is for your good that I go, because in these challenging circumstances, in these unfavorable situations, the Comforter will comfort you. The helper will guide you through. The helper will see, will see you through these unfavorable, challenging, and life-threatening situations. Last, not only does the Holy Spirit convict the world regarding sin, not only does the Holy Spirit empower the believer to advocate, uh, to publicly. Uh, 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 Tell the world that Jesus is the only way, the only sacrifice provided by God for the justification of men by believing Jesus. The Holy Spirit, third, will also convict the world, will also convict the people with Satan's defeats. 
Hallelujah. And Satan's defeat has been secured and guaranteed by the death of Jesus on the cross for our sin. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will make people aware of that. The Holy Spirit will, will convict the people of Satan's defeat through Christ's death on the cross. Not only that, the Holy Spirit will also make the people aware of God's present judgment of the world and also on the future judgment on the entire human race, including individual accountability. Now, to make that awareness, to make the awareness that God, through Jesus, has defeated Satan, to make that awareness, the awareness of God's present judgment in this present world, and God's judgment in the future world, that is not easy to do. Psychology cannot do that. Brainwashing cannot do that. Learning institutions find it hard to do that. We need the convincing power of the Holy Spirit. The convincing power of the Holy Spirit will convict the world about this truth. You and I need to tell the world about this truth. That Satan has already been defeated. We should also tell the world through the leading of the Holy Spirit that God that God's judgment in this present world in, in, in the world that we're living in is true. Not only God's judgment on this world because of sin but there is also a future judgment by God on everyone including Satan. And Satan will stand to be condemned. His followers also stand to be condemned. Now that is not an easy thing to do. As I've said, like the other two truths mentioned above, you'll also, you, you will also encounter the same situation when you are used by God to tell the world about Satan's defeat and God's judgment in the present world and in the future of life. As been mentioned in the other two truths, some will hear that truth and believe it and turn to Jesus and get saved, while the others would not easily swallow that truth, will hate you, would love to persecute you because of that claim, would love to see you die, would love you to, would love to see you put out of synagogue, put out of churches, put out of communities. Jesus said, that is why I am saying to you, it is for your good. It is to your advantage. It is best for you that I go. Because my going, even though it may seem improper, but it is convenient for you. Convenient for you that I go. So that I will send the Holy Spirit to empower you to convict the world regarding sin. Convict the world that Jesus is the only way to God. And convict the world that Satan and his followers will stand to be condemned in the present world and also in the future, the life after death. Expect that during the course of his proclamation, the world will hate you. The world will love to persecute you. The world would like to kill you. The world will try to put you out of communities, synagogues. Be rest assured that the Holy Spirit will be there to help you, to comfort you, to empower you, to guide you, and to see you. My friend, in our work with the Lord, in our work for the Lord, 
you and I need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will comfort you, will empower you to advocate, to publicly declare this truth, will help you in strengthening you in these challenging times, and the Holy Spirit will see you. It is my prayer that it would be your desire, my desire, our desire to have a fresh anointing, another fresh anointing of, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As a songwriter wrote, and I'd like to, I'd like to end my sharing with that song, a very popular chord that we used to sing in church, Spirit of the Living God, for the fresh of me. I like the chorus. The chorus says, Melt me, mold me, fill me, and use me. Spirit of the living God for the fresh of me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter the helper, the counselor, the advocate. We thank you, God, for this precious gift. I pray, God, that you will, that you will anoint us once again with the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Jesus, for emphasizing this truth, that during these trying times, we as believers need the Holy Spirit. We cannot live without the Holy Spirit. And I pray God that you help us today to have a strong desire for the Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit for the comfort, for helping us, for taking us through this trying time. We will be hated, we will be persecuted, we will have challenging times, but we thank you for, for helping us, for the comfort, and for empowering us to go through. I pray God for the believers that are listening this morning. I pray God that you fall afresh on them this morning. Bless those that are hearing this message today. We pray in no other name, but in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all and have a blessed day.